Thank you so very much for joining us this day for worship here at Starkville First United Methodist Church. We have an exciting time of worship in store for you this day. Uh, we look forward to drawing you in through the camera, into this worship service. And I pray that whatever we say or do here today will not only glorify God, but also will touch you and your family in a very special and powerful way. Thank you again for joining us for worship. Let's go now. Welcome to First United Methodist Church. We're so glad to have you here. Um, if we could just stand and join and uh, just greet somebody, somebody that you might not have met, somebody that's new. And uh, if you want to, we can all scoot together in the center because there's not as many of us here as usual. So uh, just meet somebody you haven't met before. How you doing, Jeff? That was fun. That's so weird. I totally missed that whole song in practice. We missed that whole song in practice. Now, if y'all could, uh, we're going to have a seat and we're going to watch our stewardship moment. Stewardship, a way of life. One definition of stewardship is active management of assets and properties of an organization. The Book of Discipline of the United Methodist Church specifically states that the Board of Trustees shall hold title to and manage the property belonging to the entire charge. They shall have the supervision oversight and care of all real property and all property and equipment acquired directly by the local church or by any society, board, class, commission connected therewith. Nine members comprise our local board of trustees. Each member serves a three-year term. The chairman of the board is elected by the nine members of the board. The general budget of our church has in the past year allocated $223,000 for the trustees to carry out their responsibilities. These monies have been used to maintain the church building and its equipment, as well as the two parsonages. Some of the areas which the trustees have addressed are safety related, with new handrails and access walks being built on existing stairs. At least one new classroom has been established by simply adding walls to the end of a hallway. Other items that enhance the educational programs of our church are the retractable screen and digital equipment, which make this video available to you. And the board oversees many other areas you will never be aware of, 
unless something, such as the heating cooling unit, becomes inoperative. The trustees are well aware that our congregation has reached its limit on space for expansion of classrooms and other activities. We are past the need for parking space. As they search for the solutions to these good problems which have come with the growth of our congregation, they seek to balance the needs of the church programs and the monies that are available. Leslie Hester currently serves as the chairman of the Board of Trustees. It has been my privilege to serve as chairman of the Board of Trustees during the year 2007. Our board meets monthly to address existing problem areas and to seek to provide the physical resources needed by our ever-expanding programs. We try not to be just a reacting board, but one that seeks solutions before problems arise. The Board of Trustees can only function at the highest level when they understand the needs of the church as a whole. You as a member of this church have the responsibility of being a good steward of our property. Even if you never aspire to be a member of this board, you can be a part of our mission. Learn who the board of trustees members are and pass along to them your suggestions and ideas. Working together, we can be good stewards of those things which we collectively own. Blessed be your name when the land that is plentiful, where the streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name when I'm found in the desert place. Though I'm Blessed be 
Dear God, I thank you for bringing us here today. I just thank you for, for giving us this beautiful day and this nice, cool weather, Lord, for letting the, the sun rain down on us, Lord, and just letting your, your light just shine on us, Lord. God, I hope that we come to you humbly right now and, and just asking for thanks and forgiveness and, and just being blessed by your name, Lord. I hope that everybody out here feels blessed by their name and that we just know that you're the God of wonders and that you're just the greatest thing that can happen to us. I hope that our, our hearts are open and our minds are open and that the words that Jason speaks to us, they're just a blessing upon our hearts, Lord, and they're exactly what you want us to hear. And just help us worship today, Lord, freely and openly. In your name we pray, amen. Lord of all creation Of water, earth, and sky The heavens are your tabernacle Glory to the Lord on high God of wonders beyond our galaxy you are holy, holy. The universe declares your majesty. You are holy, holy. Lord of heaven and earth. Lord of heaven and earth. Lord of heaven and earth. beyond our galaxy you are holy holy the universe declares your majesty you are holy holy lord of heaven and earth lord of heaven and earth and earth. Lord of heaven and earth, A hallelujah, to the Lord of heaven and earth, A hallelujah, to the Lord of heaven and earth, A hallelujah, to the Lord of heaven and earth, A hallelujah, to the Lord of heaven and earth. 
God of wonders beyond our galaxy. You are holy, holy. The universe declares your majesty. You are holy, holy. Lord of heaven and earth. Lord of heaven and earth. Now we'll have a scripture reading. The word today comes from Luke 18. Then Jesus told them a parable about their need to pray always and not to lose heart. He said, In a certain city there was a judge who neither feared God nor had respect for people. In that city, there was a widow who kept coming to him and saying, Grant me justice against my opponent. For a while he refused, but later he said to himself, Though I have no fear of God and no respect for anyone, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her justice so that she may not wear me out by continually coming. And the Lord said, Listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God grant justice to his chosen ones who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long in helping them? I tell you, he will quickly grant justice to them. And yet, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? He also told this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and regarded others with contempt. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee, standing by himself, was praying thus, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, thieves, rogues, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give a tenth of all my income. But the ta tax collector, standing far off, would not even look up to heaven. But he was beating his breast and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his home justified rather than the other. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled, but all who humble themselves will be exalted. The word of the God for the people of God. A holiness, a holiness is what I long for. A holiness is what I need. What I need, oh Lord. A holiness. A holiness is what you want from me. Sing righteousness. Righteousness, righteousness is what I long for. Righteousness is what I need. It's what I need, oh Lord. Righteousness, righteousness is what you want from me. Take my heart and take my heart and form it and take my mind transform it and take my will transform it into yours to yours oh lord brokenness Brokenness is what I long for. Brokenness is what I need. So what I need, oh Lord. Brokenness, brokenness is what you want from me. Faithfulness. Faithfulness, faithfulness is what you long for. Faithfulness. Is what I need, is what I need, oh Lord. Faithfulness, faithfulness is what you want from me. And take my heart and form it. And take my mind, conform it. And take my will, transform it. Until yours, 
Into yours, oh Lord. Into yours, into yours, oh Lord. Into yours, into yours, oh Lord. We bow our hearts, we bend our knees. O oh, Spirit, come make us humble. We turn our eyes from evil things. O oh, Lord, we cast down our idols. So give us clean hands and give us pure hearts. Let us not lift our souls to one another and give us clean hands and give us pure hearts. Let us not lift our souls to one another. Oh God, let us be a generation that seeks Seeks your face, oh God of Jacob. Oh God, let us be a generation that seeks. Seeks your face, oh God of Jacob. We bow our hearts. We bend our knees. Oh, Spirit, come make us humble. We turn our eyes from evil things. Oh, Lord, we cast down our idols. So give us clean hands and give us pure hearts. Let us not lift our souls to one another. Give us clean hands. Give us pure hearts. Let us not lift our souls to one another. Oh God, let us be a generation that sees. Seek your face. Oh God of Jacob, oh God, let us be a generation that sings and seeks your face. Oh God of Jacob, give us clean hands and give us pure hearts. Let us not. Lift our souls to one another and give us clean hands, oh God. And give us pure hearts. Let us not lift our souls to one another. We're going to sing this uh, first verse on step by step. And it says, Oh God, you are my God, and I will forever praise you. And I seek you in the morning, just like we are now. And I will learn to walk in your ways, just as, we, just as we learn to walk in his ways as we go to Sunday school and everything. And step by step, you'll lead me, and I will follow you all of my days. And let's just sing that with conviction on ourselves and just believe it. You know, it's, it's very rare that sometimes, you know, you're out there and worshiping, and I've been there. And you're just singing the words, and they don't necessarily mean anything to you. But these words are just, it just describes everything that we try to do every Sunday morning. And so let's try and make these words reality through praise. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise. I 
walk in your ways and step by step you'll lead me and i will follow you all of my days just sing oh god you are god again oh god you are my god and i will ever praise you oh god you are my god and i will ever praise you i will seek you in the morning and i will learn to walk in your ways and step by step you'll lead me and i will follow you all of my days you may be seated well amen I, I didn't hear you. Amen. Oh, thank you. I just thought it was me. I wasn't sure. You know, a parable is interesting, isn't it? The scripture that was read this morning, it's, it's a very interesting parable about two people going to church. And you know, sometimes I was th I, I, as I thought this week, I thought, you know, sometimes some of these parables seem, well, they seem far removed from where we are right now, don't they? They do, they really... You think about a Pharisee and a tax collector. Lord, we don't need, you know, Pharisees and tithe. We don't even have those people anymore, per se. And so i tell you what I did. I, I found something I think maybe puts it in context for us. It's the parable of the church member and the drug dealer. As Methodist Mary walked into church one Sunday morning, she was disgusted to see Larry Lowlife there. For Larry was a drug dealer who had just gotten out of jail. Mary warned some of the ushers to keep a close watch on Larry because he was a no-good crook. Before the offering, it was Mary's time to pray. She walked proudly to the microphone and began to pray using her most religious tone. Heavenly Father... I thank thee that I've been a member of this church for 20 years. I even remember when I built this building using my own two hands. And I thank thee that I haven't missed a single Sunday for over 10 years. There were times, O oh Lord, when I was sick, but I came anyway. And Father, thou knowest I used to sing in the choir until I was persecuted by the song leader who wouldn't sing my style of music. But I can endure persecution just like thou didst, O Lord. Thou hast blessed me financially, so I've been able to give you much more than the required 10%. I thank thee that I am morally pure, for I don't drink and I don't cuss on Sundays. And I don't smoke unfiltered cigarettes. And I don't use drugs or sell them like someone else among us today. Lord, we need more people just like me in our church. And Lord, help everyone to come out tomorrow night at 7 p.m. at Oak Park Field to watch our church softball team beat the Baptist again and bless the gift and the giver. Amen. Well, after napping through much of the sermon, Methodist Mary strolled out of church feeling good about herself because she had made it through yet another Sunday. She liked leaving church because she didn't have to think about God again until the next Sunday. Meanwhile, Larry Lowlife was slouched on the back pew. After hearing the message of God's forgiveness, he slipped to his knees and began to pray. Holding his face in his hands, he sobbed quietly, God, I'm the dirtiest sinner in this town. I am so sorry. 
I don't deserve it, but is there any way you can wash away my filth? Please, God, I need you. I tell you, it was lay new life, not Methodist Mary, who went home that day right with God. For she who trusts her stuff before God, who tr struts her stuff before God, will eventually be slapped down. But when you admit you are like dirt compared to God's purity, God will pluck you up and clean you up and make you new. Hmm. Are we more like Mary or Larry? Now the parable kind of comes home to us, doesn't it? It kind of, well, it speaks to us where we are this very day. Let me ask you a question. Why are you here today? Really? You no, know, don't answer. But why? Why are you here today? Well, the Pharisee went to church that morning or that afternoon. He went to the temple that day to be seen. That's why he was there. And reality is that there are many people in our church this very moment who are here only to be seen. Now, the Pharisee not only was seen at church, and by the way, that was his duty to be at church because after all, being of that sect, it said that you have to make certain amount of appearances at church or in the temple each week. And so he went that day to be seen in the church. But as the scripture tells us, he, he wasn't just there to be seen in, 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 in face only. No, he had to go, as scripture says, and prayed himself to the front of the church with his flowing robes, saying the right things and standing in the right place and using the right mannerisms. See, it was all about appearance for the Pharisee that day. He went to be seen. Well, on the other side of the coin, there was another man there that came, Larry Lowlife. He came that day certainly not to be seen. As a matter of fact, he knew that people in that church would probably, well, not really want him there. So he took a pew close to the very back door. And he was there that day not to just be seen, but he was there seeking God. He was genuinely there in search of forgiveness. He was there in search of new life, a new opportunity. So I ask you this morning, why are you here today? Why? Are you here out of simple, simple duty because this is what I do on Sunday? Did you do it? Are you here because your parents said you got to do it, and if you don't do it, then you won't do nothing the rest of the day? As I often tell our kids. I mean, really, what, what is your purpose in being here today? I hope your purpose was like the old tax collector who came to be made right with God, who came seeking a fresh start, a new opportunity. And folks, the reality was both of those folks that came to the temple that day accomplished exactly what they wanted to accomplish. One was seen as he wanted to be, and the other was forgiven as he was seeking to be. So why are you here today? Why do you come each and every Sunday morning? Why do you go to Sunday school? What's the reason behind? I think that's a very good question for us to ask. I think it's an important question for us to ask. And honestly, honestly, if you're not coming for the right reasons, then you're really wasting your own time and you're wasting God's time as well. That's the honest truth. You could just well be anywhere else in this whole world doing anything else if you're here for the wrong reason. Now, don't get me wrong. We want you here. We want you here. We want all, everybody here. We, we, our goal every Sunday morning is when we open the doors of these church that, that people will be just pile in in droves seeking God and seeking to do God's will and, and seeking newness and, and, and new opportunities. And, and as we think towards Stewardship Sunday, that's what, we're, that's what we're doing. We're giving people new chances, new opportunities to be involved in this church in the life of this church. And we do that 
each and every Sunday. Now think about next Sunday for, for sure, which is Stewardship Sunday when we get to come and, and, and we'll have communion here and we'll come to these altars and we'll, we'll lay our commitment cards here on this altar. And, and, and I hope that that will be a Sunday that you can kind of mark on your calendar or set in stone saying this is the day that I quit trying and pretending to play church and quit coming to church for the wrong reasons. This is the day that I'm going to say I will become new in Christ. Whether it be through a relationship with Jesus Christ or whether it will be an honest discussion with yourself and with God about the reasons why you are coming to this church or to any church for that matter. Well, you know, that's just one of the questions that this parable causes us to ask ourselves. Another great question that this parable causes us to ask is, well, what kind of attitude did we bring with us this morning to this church? Really? Well, you, you know why you're here, but what did you bring? What kind of attitude did you bring with you this morning? Well, the Pharisee, or Methodist Mary, if you will, they came to church for this reason. They came to church to show off their goodness before God and before the church. Now you remember, remember the Pharisee, he talked about all that he had done and all that he was doing. Now you remember Mary, now I think 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 times she used the word I. She said, I thank thee, I built this church, I haven't missed a single Sunday, I came when I was sick, I was persecuted but came anyway, I can endure so I've been able to give much, I'm morally pure, I don't drink, I don't cuss, and on and on and on she goes. Well, the Pharisee did the same thing. He stood before the temple and before the people, and he said, I am so glad I'm not like the rest of these people. I am so glad that I am upholding the law. I am so glad that I'm giving my ties to the church. I, 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 I. So he was there purely out of his pride. He was there to tell everybody what he was doing. Now, I heard a, I heard a speaker talking to us. Uh, well, it was a group of preachers who had gathered. And uh, the, 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 pre, the speaker that was speaking to us, preachers, he, he, he made this comment, and this comment has always stuck with me. He said, if you have to remind people that you are the pastor of that church, then you are not doing too good of a job. He said, if you get in a meeting and you say, hey, I'm the pastor of this church, then you are a weak leader. He said, you should never have to tell somebody what you're doing. People just can see it. And I'm not saying that we do our great deeds before people just to be seen, but by the same token, people know we are Christians by the good things that we do. And, and so it makes a lot of sense to, for, for us to be proud of the great things that we do in Christ's name, but by the same token, it's a whole lot different when we have to stand before people and remind them of what all we are doing. And that's what the Pharisee was doing that day. The Pharisee, like Methodist Mary, was there just to tell people what they were doing. Hey, if you, have you ever wondered, have you ever asked yourself this question, am I too prideful? Have you ever asked yourself, if you hadn't, let me just challenge you, ask, ask yourself that question. Am I allowing pride to get in my way of doing the good deeds that God's called me to do? Well, there's, a, there's several ways that you can figure out if, 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 you're, you, if you're struggling with pride. One, do you use I statements a whole lot? Do you use I statements a whole lot? Think about it. The Pharisee and Mary, all three, all, both of them used I, 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 me, 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 what I. Do you, do you find yourself doing that? Well, also, pride seldom ever admits you don't need any help. Do you ever find yourself saying that, well, I don't need help? I can do that. I don't need any help. 
See, the Pharisee was there, and you think about what he was praying. He was praying, God, look what I have done. And, and honestly, he was praying to God, but yet, really, in reality, he was praying to himself. He was reminding himself of all that he had done. Now, he mentions God a few times, but really, it was nothing about God. It was about what he was doing. Finally, finally, you know you're struggling with pride if you can easily find fault in others. You know you're struggling with pride if you can easily find fault in others. Now, you think about what the Pharisee did and what Mary did. Both times, not only did they glorify themselves, but both of them did what? Well, at least I'm not like them. At least I'm not an adulterer. At least I'm not a drunk. At least I, I'm not a whatever, whatever. You know, pride says we easily find fault in others. Now, do you see how what G, the picture Jesus is painting for us in this parable? You know, as Danny and I talked this week, Danny said, can't you just see the the Pharisee kind of skipping and singing Amazing Grace as he goes to the church that morning. Just, you know, oh yeah, just sing. You know, going there thinking for the right reasons, but in all actuality, there for all the wrong reasons. Well, I think a more important question, it may be, well, not only why are you here, but what attitude did you come here with? But I think the most important question may be, how will you leave here? That, I think that's the most important question. How will you leave here today? See, the Pharisee left feeling justified. The Pharisee left feeling pretty good because he had done what was required of him. He just met the requirements. You know, what's, the commer what's, the, what's the insurance company? We just do the minimum. We just require the minimum. Geico? Is it Geico? What is it? Or what is it? What? Safe auto? Safe auto? We just require the minimum. See, that's what the Pharisee was in. The Pharisee was just, although we work for Alpha, and I will say that. Let me throw that in there. I don't want to be accused of anyway. But say, but yeah, we just do the minimums. And that's what the Pharisee was doing that day at the temple. He was just doing the minimum. He was going through the motions. And as Raymond mentioned to us a while ago, he said, that's what, you know, honestly, that's the truth. That's what we do even out here in our contemporary worship. These praise songs, if we're not careful, they just become rote. They just become what we do each and every Sunday. And we, we all know the words, we know the tunes, and we sing along, but we never give any thought to what the song says. And that's what the Pharisee, that's what Mary was doing in church that day. They were just going through the motions, not really coming with an attitude of change, of difference. They, they didn't want anything other than to be seen and to go away knowing that they've done the minimum for that week. So I think the greater question for us today is how are we going to leave here? The Pharisee left feeling good about himself and knowing that he had done the minimum. But the tax collector and low-life Larry, they left that day brand new. They left that day forgiven. Forgiven. Some will leave here this morning unchanged but some will leave here this morning unburdened. Unburdened. Because you honestly came seeking God and seeking newness and life. And that doesn't mean that you're not a Christian. That simply means you've allowed the world and pride and the lust for life to, to, to blind you to the reality. And the reality of it is, is that you are not living the life God calls us to live. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, oh, Lord, you know, 
He keeps talking about stewardship, but stewardship is honestly for me. It is a day in the life of this church, in the life of this community, where we get to say, no longer am I simply going to do the minimum. No longer am I going to just be a fly on the wall, another person that gets lost in this big crowd of ours. I honestly want to be changed. I want to be transformed into the person that God calls me to be. And you can take out that list of that stewardship card, and there's plenty of opportunities for you to be involved in the life of this church in a real way. Look, it, it's not a, we, it, we, we, don't, oh, we care about the money, but it's not about the money. It's about getting people in this church involved in this church in a real way. Because, see, what I know, what Danny knows, what Stacy knows, what Lynn knows, what Karen knows, what the staff of this church sees every single day is the way people, new people, get involved in how they get so turned on and excited for Jesus Christ. And we want simply that for the whole church because we know you're missing so much by just coming, going through the motions, doing the routine, and going home. God requires so much more of us. Folks, God deserves much more from us. Whether it be today, whether it be next Sunday, whether it be January 1, I challenge you to take a serious look at why you come to church. What are you looking for? What are you seeking? And honestly, if you think you can't get it here, then go somewhere where you can get it. If it's something that we need to change or take a look at, come talk to us. We're willing to do that. We just want this worship experience to be a time when you be, can be transformed and changed by the power of the Holy Spirit. That's what we want. And we're willing to do whatever we can do to help you achieve that. As I said, you'll all, we'll all go home here from today. Will you go unchanged or will you go unburdened? As the band comes and we sing, a, sing our... Uh, or, we, or we play during our time of prayer and our time of celebration and our time of uh, gift giving. I ask that you just pray that prayer. God, is, am I going through the routine or am I taking this serious? The altar's open. You may want to come and pray about it here. I'm here to pray with you. Deborah's here to pray with you. Uh, we just ask that as the band plays for just a few minutes and then we'll be dismissed that you seriously consider these things.
sweet the sound, amazing love, now flowing down from hands and feet that were nailed to the tree. As grace flows down and covers. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound, amazing love, now flowing down from hands and feet that were nailed to a tree. As grace flows down and covers me. Covers me and covers me and covers me and covers. Stand and join us. Uh, we're just going to sing our last closing hymn. Sing, I could sing of your love forever. Just sing it out to him. Mountains and the sea, your river runs in love for me, and I will open up my heart and let the healer set me free. I'm happy to be in the truth, and I will daily lift my hands, for I will always sing of when your love came down. I can sing of your love forever. I can sing of your love forever. Thank y'all so very much for being here today. And just a few announcements for you as you leave. Uh, one, uh, please leave the chairs where they are. Don't, don't stack them up as we usually do. Uh, Nash Street will be playing here this afternoon to release their new album and also to help raise funds for the children of Chernobyl. So come back and 
be a part of that. Also, next, this coming Wednesday night is Pumpkin Patch here in the CLC from 530 to 8. Deborah, raise your hand. This is Deborah. She's our youth minister, if you don't know her. And she would love for some help, you to, you to help her out Wednesday night. So, hey, a good way to begin stewardship, helping the youth. It's on there. Deborah's got it. And seriously, this is stewardship, our, our commitment card. And if you don't have one, we'll have, we've got some available for you. We'll have some for you next week. Take it, pray about it, and seriously consider where God would lead you to be involved in the life of this church. And then on the very bottom part, I know we're, co- we're lots of college people. I understand that. But tithing is a biblical concept. And no matter what you want to do, this would be a good place to begin. So take this and consider it. Uh, for this week. Hey, this is all I know. God wants our, be, us to be authentic in our worship. If you'll come authentically worshiping Christ each and every time you gather here in this church, whether it be here, traditional, Sunday school, uh, Sunday night, whatever, if you'll be authentic, God will respond and your life will be changed. That's my challenge for you, to be authentic in your Christian walk. Have a good week. Yeah, thank you for reminding us, Richard. We did beat Kentucky yesterday. Amen. That's right.